This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. We have some breaking news for you folks. Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, the former prefect for the then Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, one of the predecessors of Archbishop, soon to be Cardinal Fernandez, he the author of adult themed poetry aimed at teenagers, who is now waging his own silent inquisition against faithful Catholics and is accusing us of heresy. Cardinal Mueller has been asked by a German language Catholic news outlet, Cath.net, who I frequently will cite here in news stories at least a couple times a month, if not more frequently than that. Cardinal Mueller is, of course, himself German. He was asked by Cath.net what he thought of the uh, things going on with Bishop Strickland, the attempt to get him to resign, the at least the whispered plan to tr ask for his resignation, and if he doesn't resign, then to then force him out of office. If you were not aware of this story, I don't know how you couldn't be, but if you're not aware, Bishop Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas, was the subject of an apostolic visitation. Two of the most, uh, we'll say, troubling bishops from the American Episcopate were sent to do the investigation on behalf of Rome. Men who have their own sordid histories of covering up the uh, Ted McCarrick problem in the church in their dioceses, of men who have been instrumental in helping to make the James Martin sin normal in, in their diocese. Those were the men who were sent to Tyler, Texas to investigate Bishop Strickland. They reported all sorts of administrative problems and claimed that, you know, that there was enough or helped spread rumors anyway, that there was enough administrative problems in his diocese to warrant his removal. This, of course, disre completely disregards the fact that a fair number of dioceses in the United States are being mismanaged. They frankly, frankly are. All you have to do is look at parish closures and parish consolidations and the number of parishes that have gone bankrupt because of the Ted McCarrick problem or those who report enormous drop in their tithing, and you begin to see the scope of the problem. This is not a managerial problem. This is not why they went after him. They went after Bishop Strickland because he likes to go to Twitter and speak his mind. And lately he's doubled down on it by not going to Twitter, but going to his diocesan website and issuing pastoral letters that, while never coming out after Francis directly, have challenged the synod on synodality and some of the things being proposed there. Teaching the true faith on the top hot-button issues that are going to be debated at the coming synod. And we'll have more on that in the coming week because some formal announcements about that have been made by Rome. But Cardinal Mueller had some words of advice for Bishop Strickland. <laughs> and this letter looks to me like he is asking to get punished by Rome. There's no other way to put it. Remember, just last week, or maybe even earlier this week, he released a public letter saying that the faithful have the duty to resist heretical bishops. That any bishop, at the, if the Synod on Synodality releases or changes or announces any changes to the faith, if it authorizes the ordination of deaconettes, if the Synod on Synodality allows for the uh, people in the James Martin community to get their blessings from the church, the laity have no duty to follow any bishop who goes along with that, who promotes that. That those bishops, those priests, anybody involved in that, will have surrendered their authority and all their claims to obedience, and that we are to resist them. That is not news to anybody who uses common sense, that you have no duty to be obedient to people who do evil. But that is a controversial point, because there are some who believe that the Pope or the bishops as a body are divine oracles, and they can change the truths of the faith as they want, forgetting that the faith is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Cardinal Mueller understands that that's not the case. And so on top of all of that, he came out with this letter, and I have it for you here in full. I promise you it's very short, and we'll talk about it a little bit right afterwards. The commentary of Cardinal Gerhard Mueller and his advice to Bishop Strickland. Yes, what is being done to Bishop Strickland is terrible, an abuse of the divine right of the Episcopate. If I could advise Bishop Strickland, he should definitely not resign, because then they can wash their hands of their innocence. According to the commandment of justice, a bishop can only be deposed by the Pope. 
if he is guilty of something bad. Heresy, schism, apostasy, a crime, or totally unpriestly behavior. For example, this pseudo pseudonym that insults God and cheats people of their salvation. Blessing of people of both or the uh, of the similar kinds of flesh in extramarital relationships. Arbitrary removal as a bishop of a diocese, in which a bishop is appointed by Christ himself as its own shepherd, undermines the authority of the Pope, as has historically happened with the undignified office haggling under the Avenese papacy. This loss of trust was one of the main reasons for the separation of Reformation Christianity from the Catholic Church and its hatred of the Pope, who, with his arbitrary actions, puts himself in the place of God. According to Catholic teaching, the Pope is by no means the Lord of the Church, but only as Christ's representative for the universal Church, the first servant of his Lord, who had to say to Simon Peter, who had just been destined to become the rock of the Church, get behind me. Because you have in mind not what God wants, but what people want. See Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. The Pope has no authority from Christ to bully and intimidate good bishops modeled on Christ the Good Shepherd, who, in accordance with the Episcopal ideal of Vatican II, sanctify, teach, and lead the flock of Christ, in the name of Christ, just because they are false friends, denounce these good bishops to Francis as enemies of the Pope, while heretical and immoral bishops can do whatever they want, or bo who bother the Church of Christ every day with some other stupidity. Like I said, that's a spicy letter. And I do think he's asking for trouble, not because he's doing anything wrong, but because he's pointing out things. The Pope is not God himself. That the Pope is the representative of God. That he's supposed to do the will of God. That he's supposed to actually act as a pastor, not as a dictator. That's what the Pope is supposed to be. That may not be what we have now, but that is what he is supposed to be. That the Pope cannot take arbitrary action against bishops. There's nothing in canon law that lets him unilaterally remove bishops. And so his advice to Bishop Strickland is obvious. Don't go along with it. Say no when they try to get you to resign. And you know, Bishop Strickland has already said, if they ask for his resignation, he's going to say no. He did, however, say elsewhere that if Francis then tries to forcibly remove him, he will go along with it, that he will submit. I suggest that he also say no to that. That he demand his due process in the canonical system. This kind of action requires a canonical trial to show what great crime he did. Did he teach heresy? Was he a schismatic? The answers to those things are no. Now, they will probably try to get him on the schismatic action by saying that all this t activity on Twitter was against the Pope, that he was coming out against Francis and fomenting division. And I imagine that he has that Francis, if he really were so inclined, has the ability to stack whatever judicial system and process that looks like in Rome to get the outcome he wants, if he was so inclined. But this becomes now a sort of a game of chicken between Bishop Strickland and the Vatican, if he so wishes. And it looks to me like Cardinal Mueller is telling Bishop Strickland to call their bluff. Don't go along with it. Prayerfully resist. I'm kind of wondering here, and I know that Bishop Strickland is, you know, responding to this in prayer because he has said as much publicly. The question I have here, has Cardinal Mueller had enough? Has he had enough of modernist Rome? Cardinal Mueller before the Second Vatican Council would have been counted as a, as a theological liberal, like Ratzinger would have been. Benedict XVI, I know that's a surprise to many of you, but their theology is would have been considered to be Pretty liberal compared to what came before the council. The, uh, we won't. <laughs> you can use your imagination on what they would have thought of Paul VI and Francis before the council, but the in the grand scheme of things, the, these are not traditionalists. That's the great point here. And whether you disagree with me on the whether they would have considered liberal by preconciliar standards or not, at least we can hopefully agree that they are not traditionalist bishops. Neither is Strickland. Mueller are not traditionalists. They are men who have the faith. They are shepherds of the church who have the faith, who simply want to do right by God and right by his church, knowing full well that in their hands is, this, is the responsibility to guide souls to salvation. And both men seem to see that the synod on synodality is in fact a threat to that. I want to know what you have to say in this. So let me know in the comments. Keep Bishop Strickland and Cardinal Mueller in your prayers 
please. This is a key time in the church. They are announcing, as we speak, the participants of the Synod on Synodality, and many of them are just fringe, and we'll go over that in the coming days. Keep these two faithful shepherds in your prayers. I expect fully that Bishop Strickland, they're going to ask for his resignation before the Synod on Synodality. That's just in a few days. So please keep both of these men in your prayers. And hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.